this is rajiv roy welcoming you to my today's lecture uh, actually uh, this is a class which was supposed to be conducted by my chairman sir but i have been given another opportunity to be in front of you uh, in my last class i told you that i would start with english first paper but unfortunately uh, i'm i'm willing I, or you can say i'm interested in talking about another grammatical item and that is completing sentence uh, today i'm going to start with completing sentence and um, i hope i will be able to complete this topic with practice within three or four classes and i hope you will be with me and participate uh, my class works so that everything becomes crystal clear to you so my dear students today we are going to focus on completing sentence which is given at question number four okay um, uh, the rules of completing sentence are related to right forms of verb or you can say transformation even related to phrases and words of question number three i'm going to start with i'm going to start with a very familiar grammatical item related to completing sentence and this is nothing but conditional sentence i will talk about every pros and cons of conditional sentence and uh, you are requested to be ready you are requested to be ready with your pens and scripts and my dear students if you listen to me carefully and if you if you just continue with writing i'm sure you'll be able to understand the pros and cons related to completing sentence try to keep in mind that this topic is really important for your university admission test this is not only important for university admission test but also important for your job sector so take preparation from right now we are going to start with conditional sentence how is conditional sentence related to how is conditional sentence related to completing sentence look at at question number four there is completing sentence the headline of the question is fill in the following sentences with suitable phrases on words question number four fill in the blanks of the following sentence or you can say complete the following sentences with suitable words or phrases look at question number four the headline is complete the following sentences with suitable words and phrases my beloved students look at the line complete the following sentences with suitable words and phrases this line conveys the meaning that you can use both word sorry it should be clauses sorry sorry my dear students it should be clauses that means in order to complete the sentence you can use both clause and phrase both clause and phrase our first our target is to make difference between phrase and clause okay clause is a group of words my dear students clause is a group of words with one subject and one finite verb if you want to if you want to call a part of a sentence clause this part must have to contain one subject and one finite verb okay it will be a clause but in phrase a phrase is a group of words having no subject and no finite verb but it will give a meaning okay for example we learn english in the morning 
We learn English in the morning. Look at the in the morning. Is it a phrase or is it a clause? What do you think? In the morning is a phrase. Okay, this is not a clause. Look at if you read, you will pass. If you read, you will pass. This is a part and this is a part. In this sentence, we have got two parts. And each of the part contains one subject and one finite verb. You is the subject, it is the finite verb. You is the subject, we will pass finite verb. That's why you can call it a clause and you can call it a clause also. Okay. In a clause, definitely one subject and one finite verb will be there. But in press, no subject and no finite verb will be there. So my dear students, it's a great opportunity for you to complete the sentences. You can use both phrases and clauses. Okay. Now, my dear students, let us let us start with our most important items related to completing sentence. I have I have given you some sorts of conception regarding the question. Now I'd like to start with completing sentence, and I have already told you that I would like to start with conditional sentence. Okay. This is our rule number one. And conditional sentence will take in order to complete conditional sentence in detail. We will take a lot of time okay this is really important not only for question number four but also for your writing items because every now and then my dear students you people very often use conditional sentence in your writing that's why we need to be very serious in learning conditional sentence because we don't want to make mistakes in our writing side we want to get good marks and in order to get good marks you must have to ensure excellent grammatical basement okay so that the teachers are unable to pen through the lines okay my dear students i am going to start with conditional sentence okay it's conditional sentence Conditional sentence is one kind of complex sentence. My dear students, listen to me, please. Conditional sentence is one kind of complex sentence. Conditional sentence is one kind of complex sentence. I am again going to repeat. Conditional sentence is one kind of complex sentence. Now question arises, what a complex sentence is? In Bengali, in Bengali, it's called Jotil Bakka or Mr. Bakka, okay? But how to identify complex sentence should be clarified at first, okay? Should be clarified at first. How to identify complex sentence? Dear students, you know that according to structure, according to structure, sentences are of three types. According to structure, we can classify sentences into three types. There, simple sentence, complex sentence and compound sentence. I am going to repeat, according to structure, we can classify sentences into three types. There, simple sentence, complex sentence and compound sentence. And according to meaning, we can classify sentences into three types. There, five types, sorry. There are assertive sentence, interrogative sentence, imperative sentence, operative sentence and exclamatory sentence. But sentence according to Meaning is not our prime concern right now, but our concern is to learn the basic uh, classification of sentence according to structure. And according to st structure, we have already classified sentences into three types. They are simple sentence, complex sentence, and compound sentence. Dear students, don't forget that simple sentence, complex sentence, and compound sentence can only be identified with their individual structure. Simple sentence, complex sentence, and compound sentence are identified with their individual structure. That means, in other words, I can say, simple sentence has its own respective structure. And 
so does complex sentence. That means complex sentence has its own individual structure. A complex sentence is such a sentence which contains one principal clause and one subordinate clause. The students, a complex sentence consists of a complex sentence consists of one principal clause and one subordinate clause. Okay. In other words, I can say a complex sentence is made up of one principal clause, one subordinate clause. Okay. Consist of means gotita ho. Make up of. This is also this 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 is a phrase. It also conveys the meaning gotita ho. Gotitaha consists of and make up of. So a complex sentence consists of one principal clause and one subordinate clause. Now now question arises what a principal clause and what a subordinate clause is. Okay. You know that you know the structure of complex sentence. I, I don't want to discuss it in detail. Actually, I'd like to focus on a conditional sentence. You know that conditional sentence is related to complex sentence and a complex sentence consists of one principal clause and one subordinate clause. Look at this. We know that, we know that, we know that, We know that education is the backbone of a nation. We know that education is the backbone of a nation. We know that we know that education is the backbone of a nation. We know, look at please. We know is a part of this sentence. We know is a part of this sentence. And that education is the backbone of a nation. That education is the backbone of a nation is the second part of this sentence. We know is the first part. That education is the backbone of a nation is the second part of the sentence. And this first part contains one subject and one finite verb. We know. That's why we can call this part a clause. And look at please. That education is the backbone of a nation is also a clause because this part contains one subject and one finite verb. Okay, so we have got two clauses. The first one is we know, and the second one is that education is the backbone of a nation. Now, let us go deeper into this sentence. We know is such a clause which is able, the students, listen to me carefully. We know is such a part of this sentence which is able to express its meaning independently. That's why we can call this clause independent clause. Okay? The clause which is able to express its meaning independently. That means the clause which can express its meaning without the help of any other clause is called independent clause. And the clause which depends on the independent clause to express its meaning is called subordinate clause okay so uh, uh, it's called subordinate clause or dependent clause okay so the first one is we know is an independent clause and independent clauses are called principal clauses okay so independent clauses are called principal clause and dependent clauses are called subordinate clause Clear to you? Uh, one thing must be kept in mind. Subordinate clause or dependent clause contains conjunction. Okay. So, if you get one principal clause and one subordinate clause in a sentence, this sentence will be called complex. And a complex sentence must contain one conjunction. And this conjunction is used in subordinate clause. So, principal clause is free from conjunction but in subordinate clause we must have to use a conjunction so up to this part i have talked about 
the classification of sentence according to structure simple complex compound complex sentence consists of one principal clause one subordinate clause a clause consists of one subject and one finite verb a principal clause consists of one subject and one finite verb a subordinate clause consists of one subject and one finite verb but principal clause is independent subordinate clause is dependent subordinate clause is dependent on principal clause and in subordinate clause you will we will get one conjunction okay up to this part i have tried a little bit to make a complex sentence clear to you now let us talk about conditional sentence uh, my dear students are you getting me what do you think i am i am a bit faster today i i'd like to complete a conditional sentence in detail and i have just 50 minutes with me and within 50 minutes we will learn a lot related to conditional sentence okay now I have told you that conditional sentence is related to complex sentence and I have told you that in complex sentence definitely there will be a conjunction. For conditional sentence there must be some definite conjunctions. Now I am going to give you a list of the conjunctions used in conditional sentences and you can write down, you can write down dear students. Conjunctions used in conditional sentence. Conjunctions used in conditional sentence. Okay. Number one, if number two, in case. Number three, providing that number four, provided that number five, sorry, unless even had even had is also had had also contains the meaning of this conjunction okay if in case providing that provided that unless if in case providing that provide these are phrase but this phrase uh, this conjunctional phrase has the meaning jodi okay if means jodi in case means jodi providing that means jodi provided that means jodi unless means jodi na okay dear students all the conjunctions for conditional sentence all the conjunctions suitable for conditional sentence maintain the same grammatical basement okay so don't get afraid if you get providing that or provided that or in case because in case providing that and provided that, that maintain the same meaning of if okay these are the conjunctions that we use in conditional sentence okay if in case providing that provided that unless even we can use had i will make it clear to you now let us go deeper into conditional sentence Conditional sentence consists of one principal clause and one subordinate clause. And in subordinate clause, we will get a conjunction. And this conjunction will be if, in case, providing that, provided that, and unless. Now, let me give an example. If we did not start our class, in time i have started with if i have started with if and this one is an example of subordinate clause or dependent clause and after comma we will use a 
principal class. Okay? This is the question pattern. If we did not start our class in time, blah, 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 blah. What should be the answer in principal clause? Which tense should I use? Which tense should I use in this part? And if, if we want to know the tense of conditional sentence, we need to know three rules and regulations. Okay? So, my dear students, in our conditional sentence, we will get two clauses. One is principal clause and one is subordinate clause. In subordinate clause, there must be conjunctions which carry the meaning jodi in Bengali. Is my message clear to you? The conjunctions which carry the meaning jodi are used in conditional sentence, actually in subordinate clause. Okay? Now, I am going to talk about the rules and regulations of conditional sentence. Okay, now uh, the conjunctions are clear to you. Uh, now, uh, my dear students, uh, be ready with pens and scripts and try to write with me. Okay. This one is better. Okay. The students, I'm going to talk about the, the classification of conditional sentences. This is really important. Conditional sentences are of three types. Okay. Conditional sentences are of three types. You can write. Conditional sentences are of three types. They are, they are number one, number two, and number three. Number one, first conditional, number two, Second conditional, number three, third conditional. My dear students of Dhaka College as well as the students of other institutions of Bangladesh, uh, you were requested to have question if you fail to understand me. If you fail to understand me, please don't, hesi please don't hesitate to make question in the comment box. After the class is over, after the class is over, I will have your, I will try to read your comment. And one thing, one request is from my side. Please be attentive in the comment, uh, comment box. Please don't do anything that destroys the environment of the comment box. That is our learning process. Okay. So, conditional sentences are of three types. They are first conditional, second conditional and third conditional. Okay. The students, look at please. First conditional, second conditional, third conditional. Conditional means a, a special type of complex sentence. And in first conditional, in first conditional, uh, in first conditional, I will talk about, in first conditional, I will talk about two tenses. In first conditional, two tenses are used. In second conditional, two tenses are used. In third conditional, two tenses are used. Okay. So in total, we need six tenses for conditional sentence okay first conditional needs two tenses second conditional needs two tenses third conditional needs two tenses the tenses used in first conditional are not used in second or third conditional the tenses used in second conditional are not used in first or third conditional the tenses used in third conditional are not used in first and second conditional so we have to be really alert in terms of using tenses related to conditional sentence. So, first conditional contains two tenses, second conditional contains two tenses, third conditional contains two tenses. Okay. Now, I'd like to, now I'd like to talk about, now I'd like to talk about the tenses used in conditional sentence. Okay. We need, 
we need six tenses okay one two three four five six we need six tenses to complete this three rules of conditional sentence number one Number one, present in defeat. Number two, past in defeat. Number three, past perfect. Number four, pitch and defeat. Number five, past conditional number 6 perfect conditional look at please my dear students present in the fit past in the fit past perfect future in the fit past conditional perfect conditional these are the six tenses that are used in conditional sentence but we need to find out two tenses for first conditional we need to find out for uh, find out two tenses for second conditional and we need to find out three tenses for third conditional okay so in total we need six tenses that means six tenses make three rules okay first rule first conditional second one second conditional third one third conditional these are the six tenses now i would like to talk about these tenses present in the fit past in the fit past perfect future in the fit past conditional perfect conditional these six tenses have their individual structure am i right my dear students these six tenses have their individual structure